Okay, so we're going to talk about one of the biggest ideas in programming right now, and that's the whole idea of a conditional statement. Um, I'm going to demo this in a few different ways, but this is one of the most important single concepts in programming. The whole way computers work is by either electricity happening or not. That's either a one or a zero. And so decisions in this if-else fashion, so if there's electricity in one section, then something happens. If there isn't, something else happens, right? And that happens billions of times a second in modern computers with very little error rate. And this is what all of programming is based on, right? And then we get loops, which is something like repeat until something is true or repeat while something is true. Okay, so first off, it leaves this little hexagon block, okay? So this is called Boolean in most languages. Um, it's referred to as predicate blocks in Snap. But what Boolean means is simply true or false. So when you go to the operator section, you see a bunch of these um, hexagon blocks. So it's simply saying if these two things are equal, right? So if I put in three and three and click on this, the value of this is true. If I do four equals three and click on this, this hexagon block is false. So hexagons in snap refer to true or false values, right? I have the less than or equal to, I have the and which takes two hexagons, right? So it's if both of these are true, so like true and true, you can actually test these values and then click on it and go, oh, they're both true. Or you can go, what about if one's true and one's false and I click the and? Ooh, they're not both true. So these hexagons refer to true or false value. There's all over, right? There's a, in the sensing category, there's things like, is the space key being pressed right now? It is not. Now on my keyboard, I can hold the space key down and oh my gosh, it is now true, let up. And so this sensing will sense whether or not I'm actually holding the space key down. Okay. So that being said, let's actually test it out, okay? Here's a really simple program that'll do it. Uh, I'll just say, uh, when clicked, if something is true, and I'll go to looks and I'll just say something, right? So I'll say, um, hello, or I'll say, uh, goodbye, okay? So one of those two things. Now I could simply put in something like this, not very interesting, right? Is four equal to three? If so, say hello. Otherwise, say goodbye. So when I start my program, because three is not equal to four, it will run the else, right? And it will only say goodbye for two seconds. All right, so now let's make it a little more interesting. Let's actually ask the user a question, okay? So let's go to sensing because we're sensing user input. And let's ask a question, okay? So here we're going to say, um, what is one plus one? All right, really simple question. And then here, this is their response, okay? This is temporarily saving whatever response. If you ask again, then the old response is lost and you only have the most recent response. So we'll say if their most recent response is two, then you say, good job, math expert. And then down here, ooh, too bad. One plus one is actually two, right? So here's a nice easy program where we go, okay, let's ask this question and wait. So when I click this, it prompts up us with a question and then we have to type something in here. Until we type something in, it's not gonna run the code below. So it's waiting for us. And I'm gonna say, ooh, one plus one is 11. Ha <laughs> ha, because it kinda is in programming when we get to concatenating strings. Let's say it's 11 and, oh, too bad, not true, right? Whereas when I run it and I click two, woohoo, good job, math expert. So that's the basics of a conditional, okay? Now I'm gonna do the same thing, but now I'm gonna do it with motion, okay? So I'm gonna use some ifs or some if else to steer a character around. I'm gonna leave it as this little turtle sprite for now, but really common when we wanna control something, we don't want any wait blocks because waiting freezes your program and doesn't detect input. And so even if it's for a fraction of a second, it's not getting it 
put in a smooth way and all of a sudden your program becomes jumpy and skittery so instead what we're often going to do like especially in our first game that we're going to start next week um, i'm recording this first week of school is we'll have a forever loop that just checks a bunch of if things right and it's simply going to check if a key is being pressed then do something okay so what if they press the right arrow then let's go ahead and move to the right. So let's go to motion and let's just change our X by 10. Okay, same thing. If we are pressing the left arrow, then move X by negative 10. Whoops, that was 109. So now when I start this, this is highlighted because this block of code is running. So it's forever looping. So it's running through here bajillions of times. So fast, so fast. Actually, probably just in the thousands because it's not actually that fast. Uh, and then when we press the right arrow, so I'm going to press right. Oh my gosh. And when I press left, we go left. And it's a very smooth motion because it's happening individually so many times. Right. So one way we could just check how fast this forever loop is running is we could just make a little variable. So I go to the variables tab and I make one and I'll just call this counter. Okay. I show counter up here. I don't have to. I can check this box here to make it visible or not. I think you might even be able to right click on this. Um, no, you can't. But this little checkbox right here shows it and hides it. And what I'm going to do is at the very beginning, I'm going to start the counter at zero. And then every time this loop runs, I'm going to change the counter by one. So now we can see how many times this loop is running. Okay. So it's only run a hundred times so far. So not very fast as compared with many other programming languages where a simple loop like this will have already run probably hundreds of thousands of times, if not millions of times. So here we go is our smooth motion. Notice I'm only using an if right now. Uh, one benefit to that is if I wanted to say, check the up arrow and say, uh, let's move, change the, whoops change the Y position by 10, I could actually do both of these because as the loop comes down, it will say, am I pressing the right arrow? Then do this. And separately, totally separate question, if I'm pressing the up arrow, move up. So what that lets me do is if I hold both, I can go up and to the right. So I want to actually go back to the middle, but notice that I can go up diagonally. Whereas if I had done this in an, and I can always, click on this or right click on this and click relabel and it changes to all the different variations of that same block so instead of an if if i want to do an if else and then i put this if i'm pressing the up arrow do this now i can only go to the right or up i cannot press both right and up and go up and right because it says if i'm pressing the right arrow do this and then skip the else and keep going okay so that was just a simple example of how you could do this. Now let's do a, a totally different example. So I'm going to put this back in here and I'm going to stop my program. What I'm going to do is on this sprite, I'm going to go up here and I'm going to import some costumes. Okay. So let's import maybe um, two different things. Okay. Let's go to maybe a, ooh, a bear. That's a good one. And then let's also put in another animal. Let's put in a, a cat. Whoa, it's a crazy cat. Okay, so one thing you could do is ask the person um, playing your game maybe to choose a character. Now, this is a very simplified version. Okay, so at the beginning, I could use that sensing to ask a question. And I would say, would you like to be a bear or a cat? Okay. And then what we could do is we could at the beginning, we could say of these two costumes, I actually don't want to be either. I want to start just as the turtle, or you could have some other blank or hidden or just a decoration in general. And then what you'll do is you say, would you like to be one? Now, after that, at the beginning of your program, you could say, well, if, and then you would go to operators and you would use that equals. So if their answer was bear. Okay. Now remember under sensing right where you asked the question, there's an answer option. So you say if their, whoops, 
If their answer was bear, then what you could do is you could go to Lux and you could say, oh, where is it? Um, oh, here it is. Switch to costume, bear. And notice because it has a clear name, let's even um, rename this to just lowercase bear. And then let's um, rename this to lowercase cat. You could even do this more cleverly, like switch to costume, and then you could put in answer there. And that would work if the names match. And so you could say, if answer is equal to bear, then switch costume to bear. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use an if else because we don't want three different costumes to come up. We only want one option to come up. Now, the way you have that happen is in if else with another if else like this. And so what this gives you is it gives you exactly three possibilities. If the first thing's true, only this happens and it skips the entire else. So this whole block is ignored. Um, if that one's not true, then it goes to the else and it says, well, is this second question true? If so, then only do this and skip the else. And if both of these are false and neither one is true, then neither of those things happen and the else catches every possibility and runs. So what I'm going to say is, did they pick bear or did they pick cat or otherwise say that's not an option, <laughs> right? So here I'm going to put an if else in here. So we already said if the answer was bear, then switch to bear. And then in here we can say if their answer was cat, then switch to costume cat. And then finally, um, if they pick something else, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to the costume turtle because they picked some incorrect thing. And then I'm going to give them a message saying they picked an incorrect thing. So I'm going to say the only valid responses were bear or cat. Okay. And then if you wanted, you could even put a little loop on it where like this would loop back up to here. I'm not going to do that in this video, but let's try it out. Okay. So let's say I want to be a bear. Oh yeah. I want to be a dog. Ooh, the only valid responses were bear or cat and it switches to that costume. I'm actually going to switch to the costume before the message. I didn't like that it stayed as the last bear. Okay, so I want to be a cat. Woohoo! Let's run it again and say I want to be a bear. Woohoo! And then let's run it again and say I want to be a lizard. And oh, that's not one of the valid choices. So again, the basic idea here is there were three possible things that could happen. Either they correctly pick bear, correctly pick cat, or they incorrectly pick something. And so what I did is I nestled two or I nested two if it else's, right? One on the outside and one on the inside, giving three possible things that would happen and never would two of them happen. Either the first thing would happen or the second thing or the third done. It's like you walked up to three doorways and you can only go through one. You can't go through two doorways. You just got to pick one. And so this kind of opens up the possibilities later on for how you can use this. And absolutely, sometimes like when we were doing motion, um, instead, what we did is we said forever and we wanted them to be able to do left, right, up, down. So instead, we say forever, check a bunch of separate ifs, right? That's totally OK. It's just based on the situation, right? Because here, maybe they uh, press the right arrow and then maybe at the same time, they're pressing the left arrow, which would be kind of funky. Maybe you put those in an if else or who knows, maybe that's a valid move in your game. And they can also press the up arrow and they can also press the down. So depending on your situation, you might want them to be able to do multiple things at the same time or you might want them to only pick one valid option. But those are just the basics of how you use if else. All right. Good luck.